The Isopop broadcast made by Isovox is meant to be a premium option for people that need an attachable pop filter for front address microphones that are between 3 fourths of an inch and 2.36 inches. This product is aimed towards podcasters and broadcasters, and as of this recording, it goes for $100. I'm sure if you're watching this video, one thing that you've encountered in your life are plosives. And plosives can be a real a-hole. They can be very distracting for the listener and very frustrating for the editor. And if you just so happen to be unaware of what plosives are, it's that burst of air that happens when you say P. Now, P isn't the only plosive out there. Depending on the word, it can be T, K, D, G, or B. Now, two products in particular that help reduce plosives are windscreens and pop filters. Now, the microphone that I'm using right now is the Shure SM7B, and it actually comes with two windscreens, one that is quite a bit thinner, that's the standard one that you see, and one that's quite a bit thicker. Now, with windscreens, people don't tend to like them as much as pop filters for a couple reasons. The thinner windscreens don't reduce plosives as much, and the thicker ones are better with plosives, but they tend to affect the tone of the microphone. Whereas with pop filters, they tend to be a lot better at reducing plosives while staying transparent. Now, with the thicker windscreens, they are really nice because they're just right on the microphone. It's all right there, and you can just recover some of the frequencies in post. But with something like this, it's attached to the microphone. It's about as big as the thick windscreens, so it's not in my face if I'm filming, and it might be better at reducing plosives and staying transparent. Now with the Isopop broadcast, it actually comes with two filters, one that is labeled neutral, and that's what I've been using so far in this, and one that's labeled DS. Now these are pretty self-explanatory, but the neutral is supposed to be good at reducing plosives while staying transparent, not affecting the tone. But the DS option is going to affect the tone of the microphone a bit more, but it's supposed to help reduce sibilance. Now sibilance is that sharp sound that you hear when I say the letter, S. Now, plosives are definitely a-holes, like I mentioned before, but so is sibilance. Also, a big a-hole. So now we have the DS option in, and I'm assuming it's going to tame some of the high-end frequencies a bit. But aside from the two filters with the Isovox, it also comes with these rubber bands, and that's actually how you attach it to the microphone. It comes with six rubber bands, and you're supposed to use three at a time, so you do have some backups. But additionally, it does come with the little metal frame that you see. And on the side of there, there are some little indents, and that's where you can put the rubber bands. Now, on the very back of the Isopop broadcast is where you will find four little notches that you will put one of those rubber bands in. And that's definitely the most important band that is the tightest. Now, the way this is designed is very smart. They definitely made it so this will fit on a lot of different microphones. The indentations on the side are absolutely crucial for how this is going to fit on mic. So it was really smart that they did that. So out of the box, I got to say, I was really pleased with the build quality and the design of it. And the filters seem really good. The thing that had me the most hesitant is the $99 because the pop filter that I've had for a really long time is the Hawken P110. And this comes in at $100. And this thing is fantastic. It sounds very transparent and does a great job at reducing plosives. Now, for people that are using front address microphones, I completely understand how this could be so much nicer than having a pop filter in front of you. And actually, Isovox's like marketing video for this completely relies on the fact that if you're filming yourself and you have a giant pop filter in front of you, it, it looks dumb. They kind of play off of that whole thing and it makes sense. But one thing to note is if you do like the idea of that neutral filter as well as the DS filter, and when I do test it out, you think it sounds good, but you want a traditional pop filter like the Hawken, Isovox actually makes a more traditional pop filter and it actually comes with the two separate filters, the neutral and DS. So if you do like the idea of that, you could check that out. However, it is a little bit more expensive than the Hawken P110. It comes in at $129. I haven't personally used that pop filter, just disclaiming that. However, the material is supposed to be the same in the neutral and DS filters on this. But like always, I gotta be completely honest with you. I bought this with my own money. It was not sent to me. And I had literally no plan, zero plans of reviewing it until I saw a video that Isovox put out on their YouTube channel. The video consisted of the person using the SM7B. However, the comparison that they did wasn't the SM7B with the windscreen on versus the Isovox. It wasn't the SM7B with the thicker windscreen on versus the Isovox. It was the SM7B with no windscreen on versus the Isovox. 
I mean, come on. The SM7B comes with two windscreens. People are at least going to use that. So that bugged me enough to want to make this video. So here it is. Let's test it out. Now, the most efficient way to test this out is to kind of compare it to the other options. Now, generally with pop filters, you want them to be a little bit further back. Usually there's like the two to three finger distance. We'll go with two since it can be a little bit harder to pull this off further it'll get a little lopsided now another thing to take note of is that the recommended distance to be away from the sm7b is one to six inches now we'll kind of split that difference and i'll be three and a half inches away from the end of the grill on the sm7b for all of these tests now in case you don't know the capsule for the sm7b is actually recessed in this grill about two inches so technically I'd be about five and a half inches away from the capsule and the pop filter would be about right in the middle of that. So that should work out pretty well for this test. The options that I'm going to give are the SM7B with no protection, then with the thin windscreen, then with the thick windscreen, the neutral filter, the DS filter, and then with the Hocken P110. I'll quickly cut in between those so you can hear them next to each other, but then I'll duplicate those tests and rearrange them so you hear absolutely every option against every option. Usually I would angle the microphone a little bit like I have been for this review, but for this I'm just going right down the pipe. Additionally, I did pick words in this plosive test that do have harsh S's in them, so you can also hear that sibilance. Let's go ahead and kick it off with no pop filter and no windscreen. Peter Parker, Pablo Picasso, Planters Pickled Peanutses. 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 Now I can absolutely understand the benefit of testing the SM7B without one of the provided windscreens on versus the Isopop broadcast, just to see if the Isopop neutral filter is actually transparent. So that's what I'm doing right now. Currently I am two inches away from the front of the grill on the SM7B, and this is the neutral filter. And even though the DS filter doesn't claim to be transparent, I figured we'd throw it in this comparison anyway, just to see how not transparent it is. And once again, you are hearing the SM7B without any pop filter or windscreen on right now. I mean, I think people should just get this for this look. It looks pretty sweet. <laughs> now that I've put the Isopop broadcast on and off this microphone a bunch of times, I just wanted to let you know that when you are putting it on a microphone, the best way to do that is just to gradually like go back and forth like this as you push it back. Pushing it straight back is much more difficult. But now I'm going to jump to the RE20 that does have a bit more high-end presence, and we'll test the DS filter with that. The Electro Voice RE20 is now plugged in, and I can tend to have a little bit more sibilance on my voice with the RE20 versus the SM7B. So I did want to try out that neutral filter versus the DS filter versus no filter on this and see how it sounds. The Isopop broadcast is currently pulled a little bit off of the RE20, not super far, but I just followed the exact setup that they had on their site. Now, four inches away from the microphone, we'll test the sibilance. First, I'm not going to use a filter at all. Then I'll go to the neutral filter and then the DS filter. Sibilance is super sucky. Sibilance is super sucky. Sibilance is super sucky. Sibilance is super sucky. We'll start these plosive tests two inches from the microphone. The first one will have no filter in the isopop, and then I'll switch to the neutral filter and then the DS filter. Planters pickled peanutses. Planters pickled peanutses. Planters pickled peanutses. Now I am four inches from the microphone. Planters pickled peanutses. Planters pickled peanutses. Planters pickled peanutses. Now we'll do a plosive test six inches from the microphone. Planters pickled peanutses. Planters pickled peanutses. Planters pickled peanutses. Now when it comes to my opinion of the Isopop broadcast, I do think it's a good product. I felt like the comparison did show that this was pretty good at rejecting plosives and it was more transparent 
than the SM7Bs provided windscreens. With me owning a bunch of different microphones and a bunch of different types of microphones, this isn't as appealing as something like the Hocken P110. The Hocken P110 is smaller than your standard pop filter, so you're not having that gigantic thing blocking your face. But with this, it's very versatile. You can use it with different types of microphones. You can use it on a front address condenser mic, dynamic microphones, ribbon microphones, small diaphragm condenser microphones, whatever you want to use this on, you can. You just put it in front of it, and that's what you do. With this, it's only going to work with front address microphones of a certain size, but the size gap is is pretty decent so you can use this on a lot of them but not all of them this is very much aimed at podcasters or broadcasters where this is just going to be put on one microphone and just live on it taking it on and off isn't the funnest thing ever and i will say this is about a million times easier to put in front of a microphone rather than taking this thing on and off constantly so if you're in a situation where you just want this to live on one microphone this could be a really good option if you're willing to pay that hundred dollar price tag or even if you have like a few microphones and you're willing to take the extra time to put this on yeah this is a solid choice i do think this sounds good but when it comes to getting the best sound and the best performance it's got to go to more traditional pop filters because honestly you can only get this so far off of a microphone with pop filters like this you can dial in where you need it to be if the person is still popping peas you can pull it away a little bit more have them step off a little bit more with this it's just kind of stuck there's a little bit of leeway but not much for me personally I will probably just keep this on one microphone. It might even be the LS-208. And when it comes to the neutral or the DS filter on these, I love the fact that it does include two. I think that's really nice. With something like the DS filter, it's just not gonna be perfect for everyone. Depending on where your S's hit, this might work really well for you or not super well. But it definitely did seem to help sibilance. I don't think it replaces DSers at all. Like it's not perfect but i really do appreciate the two different filter kinds i think that's a really cool idea in general but there are just so many pop filters out there now that are very effective and a lot of them are cheaper than a hundred dollars if i had to make a choice for me personally i'm going to take the hawken p110 over this but that's just a versatility thing if i was a one mic guy maybe i would take this but if you are looking for cheaper options i made a video not that long ago that actually compared aquarium foam to the Hocken P110, they're actually a very similar material. And in my mind, the Hocken P110 was better, but the aquarium foam was no slouch. There is also this pop filter that's kind of a Hocken clone that's made by ProR. I believe it's like $23 on Amazon. I do think the Hocken was a little bit better, a little bit more transparent, but not four times better because that is the price difference. And even just to give you a quick example with the Loughton LS208, Planters pickled peanuts is. 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 And those last two are actually aquarium foam. This first one is like a little bit tighter of a material. I think it's like 30 ppi. I can't remember what this one is, but this one's the one that's included in the video. I will say the one that I included in the video feels more like the Hawken P110 as well as the Pro R. So on the BBSAR, since it does lack in versatility, but it still is nicely built and is effective, I'm gonna sit this at about a seven. Now I know I told you my opinion already, but no one really cares about that. Let's get an opinion that actually matters. Which one do cats prefer? Penny's coming in. Oh, well, it looks like she likes the Hawken. She actually really likes the Hawken, geez. Maybe we'll get one other cat to vote on this. Billy is really a... Uh like in the isopop, like a lot. Well, now we need a tiebreaker. Penny still likes the Hawken, and maybe we can get Billy to change her vote. It looks like we got two votes for the Hawken. So I'm gonna say Hawken P110 is the winner, which is what I picked. So these cats obviously have great taste and she is quite literally tasting that right now. But hopefully this review helped you out and helped you decide if the Isopop broadcast could work for you. I want to give a very big thank you to everyone that subscribed to the Audio Hotline and the biggest thank you to all of the lovely, lovely, adorable, absolutely sexy members of the Audio Hotline. But thank you all for watching. I'll see you audio nerds next time.